So currently my pre-algebra classes, we're learning how to solve two-step equations, which if you remember from pre-algebra is when you have something like 3x plus 4 equals 12. What is the value of x? Last year when I taught it, I kind of just said, get rid of the addition or subtraction first and then take care of the multiplication because you're just trying to isolate the variable. And it worked out okay, but there wasn't like a conceptual understanding of what was going on. I made this beef jerky, by the way. And so I found a resource that talked about how you can use what they intuitively know how to do in reversing operations to teach the two-step equations. If I tell you to pick a number, multiply it by two, and then subtract one, and then say, what is your final number? And you said uh, 11. Uh, students know to intuitively kind of reverse that process. Say, okay, if you multiply it by two and then subtracted one, that means to get back to where I started, I'm gonna have to add one and then divide by two. I gotta undo what I did. Um, so that's the general premise. And so we're gonna call this math magic. I'm gonna start by having them play this math magic game. And I tried it today and it worked fairly well where I'm just gonna have them actually notate the steps and then just whatever mental math they did. Then I plan on taking that process and having them show what it would look like in mathematical notation. We'll go from taking each one of these steps and turning it into mathematical notation. So my hope is to be able to get at the idea that the order of operations is still gonna have to pl play a role in it. You can't just write left to right what you're doing and actually realizing you're taking an unknown number, you're doing something to it, and then you're doing something again to it. Let's undo that. We'll see how my other two pre-algebra classes do today. I think the only thing I'll do different is probably have that discussion between um, when you have the distributive property and when you don't, but it looks like you're using the same terms before I have them kind of practice on their own, making their own so they can see if they're checking it correctly. Hello. Before we start, there's going to be an auction because my students have a classroom economy. They're all looking at me now. Um, I'll link to the directions and how I do that. Um, but they're auctioning based on some of the money that they make in the classroom economy for items that an auctioneer brought. Remember, you guys do have $500 taxes in April. So. I know, I know. Sold to see you. See, I would have gone down at the next hundred. Yeah, how much did you spend on that? Uh, 13 dollars you, you pick a number and I don't know what you picked. How can I show that mathematically? Nine. X. Right. Okay. X. What? Well, we don't have to subtract, it's just like... Totally. <laughs> want to do something first, okay, write it in the way that we would write it with the distributive property. And if you had said times two plus three, that would have That been. would have. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. Or like, well, it's like when you have a number and then you multiply it by something, when you're solving algebraically, you have to then divide it. Mm -hmm. It's really hard to show that. Mm -hmm. It's hard to get them to buy in on actually writing it with mathematical notation. Lots of friction and pushback on writing on mathematical notation. Um, the algebraic way it seems to be like, you know, to, it doesn't seem like we need to use it, but uh, as you said that even though it's hard and it doesn't seem like we need to use it, in the future it'll make things a lot easier for us. So there's definitely resistance to learning how to do mathematical notation. Seems confusing, it's why I do it when you don't need to kind of thing. I think they were getting it when we were working with whole numbers, but the thing is like we went straight from working to whole numbers and then I gave them their practice problems which was working with decimals and 
fractions and everything and a lot of them are like ah now I can't do this in my head and it's really confusing so I think I would probably scaffold that a little bit maybe do a couple practice ones together with the decimals but we'll see how this continues to play out I think just more practice uh, is gonna make them feel a lot more comfortable with it so they can see what's going on thanks for watching